So this is part three of the Jeep Cherokee XJ rebuild. Now a little backstory to this thing. Well, so far I've done uh, two videos on this on my channel. One was when uh, I first got it, the first day I got it. Uh, second part was, I would say two or so months in. Um, and I did a little update video then. And I got a lot done between part one and part two of the video. Um, but anyways, this is part three. Uh, once again, backstory on this thing. Uh, $700 Jeep Cherokee. Uh, it was originally a base model SE Cherokee. Uh, obviously, it doesn't look like it anymore because I got new rims and stuff like that. Uh, you guys saw that in part two. But again, Jeep Cherokee SE, which is the base model, $700 on Facebook Marketplace, whatever you want to call it. So um, let's go ahead and start with what has happened between part two and, well, in this case, part three. And I'm gonna be honest, not that terribly much has happened now. Um, once again, you guys saw in part two, I got new rims for it. You see there, these are from, I believe a Laredo um, Jeep Cherokee or either a Wrangler uh, Jeep. I get, I'm, again, I'm not 100% sure, but they are definitely not from a normal base model Cherokee. So this thing looks a lot more uh, higher end now that it has actually, you know, good rims because the ones that I showed in part one that originally came with this, uh, they're the ones that came stock with the car, have 180,000 miles on them and uh, they were just all rusty. They looked horrible. So uh, these were definitely much of an upgrade. Um, now let's go ahead and get my key out here and let's go ahead and get in here. Now this Cherokee also doesn't have the keyless entry. Once again, because it is the base model, but, it does have uh, power locks and power windows. So that was an option back then. Normally, I, heck, even sport Jeep Cherokees, which were the uh, higher end above the SE, they didn't even come with uh, power locks and power windows at standard. So this one has a, uh, I would say in my opinion, a kind of a rare option, especially since this is a base model SE, SE Cherokee and uh, it has the optional power windows and power locks so that's pretty cool um also a minute ago I, I just realized this if i didn't mention the year of this cherokee it's a 96 i don't know why i didn't mention that earlier uh but i didn't um anyway so what else um i believe i mentioned this in part two might not have um actually i don't think i did i got a, a speaker grills for this thing these are out of the junkyard uh, same place i got the rims and stuff and um, basically you have to take the door panel off and screw them in. And so looks like I have the higher end uh, Jensen sound system in here now when I really don't. Um, uh, for, but for speakers that are in here, they are Pioneer uh, five quarter inch, I believe. Uh, whatever fit this thing, I believe it was five quarter inch. Or maybe a six quarter, I, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, now that it has the uh, proper speaker size in it, it looks a lot better because uh, the people that had this Jeep before me, they didn't know too terribly much about it. And they put in bigger speakers than this hole could accommodate. And they were just sticking out. They were only held in by two screws. It was horrible. Uh, so you know, it didn't install them correctly or anything. They weren't even the right size. So uh, definitely fixed at that issue and it looks a lot better. Uh, same thing on that side. I have the speaker grill right there along with the uh, same speakers. Once again, Pioneers. Um, also, another thing that I have done, if you can see, the floor is lit up, and that is because I did actually a video on this, a dedicated video. I upgraded the, or I guess I could say not even upgraded, I installed these right here, and these are uh, courtesy lights for underneath the dash. Now, these uh, came once again in the higher end Cherokees, and I believe once again the Wranglers too, but this being a base model, didn't really have any options so uh this was a thing that didn't come with the Cherokee but it had the wiring harness there but no fixture or anything so um that's something that I've also noticed with this Cherokee and all Cherokees honestly by judging by the forms and stuff um there are wiring harnesses for options that didn't originally come on this Cherokee for example this thing here uh this is for your 
uh, console, your overhead console, which this Cherokee did not originally come with. Uh, so you have your wiring harness right there. You just need to get the overhead console and the wiring harness that runs from here to down here and you could have yourself a overhead console. So that's pretty cool. Same thing with the uh, under dash courtesy lights. The wiring harness was there and all you had to do was buy the thing off of eBay and it works. So uh, that was definitely a pretty cool and pretty cheap, easy to install mod. Um, again, you can see on the driver's side here, works very well. I have some LEDs in there. So that was pretty cool. Also one thing that you might notice by looking around here, I have gotten sound dender material all over this Cherokee. Um, now this is Noiko Solutions. You can find them on uh, Amazon, not sponsored or anything, but all with my own money. Um, and you can see here the entire car is covered with this stuff, um, including the roof. So that was pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely expensive stuff i spent uh i got about three boxes for this thing and i was about i was through uh i'd say two and a half boxes and they're sixty dollars or actually eighty dollars sorry uh each box so i definitely spent some money on this uh, sound dender material but i definitely think it'll be uh very much so worth it because obviously it's gonna den sound and reduce vibrations and reduce heat and stuff like that so uh definitely pretty cool I'm gonna go and put this back here. Um, now also, rust situation, no better. You saw this in part two, when I pulled up the carpets and stuff, there's a bunch of rust here from the cowl leak, and I did fix that. Now, I wanna point out something. The cowl leak, okay? If you look it up, you'll, you'll find a bunch of stuff on it. Every single Cherokee of every single model year, um, I believe from 89 to 2001, um, I believe 89 is the first year they made them. Might be wrong about that, but um, basically there's a fresh air intake duct underneath the cowl here. And the little seal around it uh, starts to crack and get brittle over time. And it allows water to come into the cabin. I'll go and show you here. Right underneath the blower motor. And it comes down here and sits on your floorboard for years and years. Uh, covered up by carpet and it causes rust very fast and also causes your floorboard to be wet along with your carpet and destroys your carpet which is what it did to mine and destroys your floorboard so uh, the only way to really fix that is to just silicone around the seal where the seal was and that did not fix it for me yeah so what i did and this solved it you have to open up the hood and over here, um, imagine if the hood was open, there would be a washer fluid reservoir. Uh, you have to take that out and then there will be the blower motor um, pointing towards the inside of the cabin. And you have to seal with whatever you use, silicone, whatever, around this seal that's there, around the blower motor, and that will fix it. Um, now in this case, I actually used um, like a tape type of material uh, for like AC lines and stuff to seal them off and it worked perfectly fine. This thing has, it's probably been that way for a month now and I've washed it mul multiple times. It's been through rain many, many times and it has not leaked a single drop. So that's how I fixed it. Um, I believe I will go ahead and release a dedicated video on how to fix that uh, sometime soon. Um, so yeah, very easy fix. You just, it's frustrating because I sealed around where the fresh air intake duct is and didn't fix it. And I eventually found out that it's the blower motor uh, leaking. So once again, it was just frustrating, but in the end, it was definitely worth it. Um, keep in mind, we do have a new floorboard in the garage. So once we get this old thing cut out, we'll get the new one in and welded in. So uh, rust situation will definitely be fixed along with the carpet. I have a new carpet in the garage uh, in color black and I will lay that here and I'll have a new carpet along with the new headliner that once again uh, it's completely fixed up it's in the garage one piece uh, we just haven't installed it because we don't want to weld with the uh, new headliner in and possibly catch it on fire or something like that or have a burn mark so uh, we're just going to wait to install the headliner that's in perfectly fine condition now perfectly new condition so I say um, in until we get the floorboard done so there's that i'm gonna go ahead and unlock the jeep here once again you can see it's working just fine um i'll go and go around to i guess the other side for this 
Um, so the other thing here is, I open this door, the back bench, as you can tell, is installed now. This back bench was in very good condition, um, aside from just a little rip. Sorry for the bad lighting, can't really help it. You can see that rip there right in the vinyl on the side. Can't really do much about that, but the actual seat itself was in very, very good condition. Um, very surprising for 183,000 miles. Um, it was just a little bit dirty, and I'm, I'm going to tell you guys a good, good product I'm very impressed by. It's uh, West Coast Customs, I'm pretty sure, and it's carpet and upholstery cleaner. You can find it at Walmart. And basically, I bought two cans of that stuff, and I used it on the passenger seat, the back or the bench here, and then also the this thing here. I don't want to, I don't know what you call it, but uh, the top part and the bottom part of the uh, back bench. And I sprayed it all over it, uh, agitated it with a detailing brush, and then I sucked it out using an extractor um, for like detailing and cleaning carpets and stuff. And these seats look absolutely brand new it's amazing again i wish i could show you with better lighting but maybe i'll turn on my flash and show you guys in a second but it looks absolutely brand new it's amazing how good that stuff is so if you're looking for a very good cleaner for your seats and stuff definitely recommend that again you can find that at amazon or not amazon walmart um it's like five dollars a can so very cool definitely recommend that stuff go and close the door here and I'll open this door you can see once again more of the uh, sound ender material along with the uh, courtesy lights up there so pretty cool um what else I know there's more things I just can't think of them right now um I guess I'll go to the back here and a few little few little things have changed there which I'm not uh too terribly proud of first thing is up here now this panel here um I think I mentioned this in part two. Uh, this Jeep, back in 2003, it had a rear end collision, and it um, it actually actually had frame damage. Um, in fact, this Jeep still does have a little bit of frame damage. Uh, sadly enough, you can't really see in there, but it's just a slight little tweak on the frame, which is obviously not ideal. But 700 dollars, it can't complain. Uh, it's not really affecting the functionality, but um, it does have frame damage. Anyways. Um, but it hit in this corner here, and I believe uh, this panel, which is from the original tailgate um, that got hit, um, it where it mounts into the holes here on the actual tailgate itself, it's broken. I don't know why or what or if it's from the collision or what, um, or someone was in here at one time, but... Uh, basically, they broke that off, so it's just hanging down on this side. It was hanging down in the middle. It looked horrible. So, um, <laughs> once again, I'm not proud of this. It's very. It makes it seem like a hillbilly did this, but it's it's what it works, and uh, it's working just fine. So basically, what I did here is that this was hanging down the plastic piece here. I JB welded right here, and that works somehow perfectly fine. Um, you can see I'm tugging it here. It's not coming down or anything. So uh, JB Weld on this worked just fine. And then also here in the corners, I just put a screw here. And uh, it's holding in perfectly fine once again. And I also put a screw on this side since it was hanging down on this side too. So um, I'm not very proud of how I did it. But it does definitely work perfectly fine. It looks a lot better than it hanging down on one side. Um, so... And also reduce vibrations too since that thing was just flopping in the air so um once again i guess you can call it an improvement even though it was not done the correct way it still works um what else back here nothing too much i've cleaned up the spare tire uh, which was in completely brand new condition the actual tire itself uh the rim was in pretty darn good condition too maybe i'd like I don't know, total 3,000 miles or something on it. Looks in very good condition. Um, was just a little dirty, but I cleaned that up too. Um, also for the tire cover here, that thing had a bunch of stains on it. And I used the same stuff, West Coast Customs, uh, carpet and upholstery cleaner on that thing too. It took those stains right off. I was blown away by that because they were, there were very big stains here. It, it just looked horrible and i sprayed that stuff on it agitated it 
let it sit for a minute and then use the extractor on it and it sucked it right out i was blown away it worked just absolutely great um and that's about it for back here um so i'll go and close this up here there we go um not much else has changed i've painted the bumpers um along with the tow hitch thing down here got an exhaust tip and i believe i showed that in part two makes it look a lot better you can see here looks way better um and gosh i know there's more but i just can't think about it um but overall i've just slowly been improving this thing again you can see the front end it's all fixed up i showed that in once again also part two um because originally when i first got this thing it had a minor front end collision the grill was missing uh this bezel here was missing um this piece here was in green since i guess the collision kind of screwed it up um so i got a new one off of amazon and i painted it black and it looks way better it looks actually stock now so um it's not all multicolored and stuff so it looks a lot better um I'm trying to think of what else oh yeah i also painted the cherokee lettering here in white and it looks way better than the dull um kind of silver that was on there that was completely peeling off and wearing off um so it looks way better you can see once again looks actually uh, in my opinion better than what it did out of the factory you can see on the back too way better in my opinion and that's just about it for what i've done again I can guarantee there's more that I've done, but I just, I can't think of it right now. Um, also, I'm going to go ahead and start it up here for you guys. So then you can hear it. Go ahead and hop in here. Now it's been about a day and a half since I've last started it. Actually, maybe two days. I don't know. It's been a while. Um, so completely cold start. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. Okay. LEDs. There it is. You can see oil pressure and stuff. So everything is still working fine on the uh, good old $700 Cherokee now. Gosh, I hate this door buzzer. You know what? I'm just gonna hop in here. Oh, close up the door here. Now for uh, AC, that is still not fixed. I need to get a new condenser and also a new dryer for it. Um, since this thing, once again, when it had its little minor front end collision, broke the condenser. So it does obviously blow air. See right there. And blow motor works and stuff. But all that it's blowing is outside air just at a um, certain miles per hour. I guess that's the best way I can explain it. Um, it's not actually cold AC or anything. It's just, once again, bringing outside air uh, into the cabin at a speed, uh, so it feels a little bit cold. But if there is, isn't no condenser in there, it's not going to be cold. Um, so there's that. Again, I'm trying to, I know there's more. I just can't think about it. But overall, I've been slowly improving this Cherokee. And once I get the uh, floorboard fixed, all I would have to do is put in, put in the uh, carpet. That's probably a four-hour job. Uh, headliner, that's a two-hour job and then the stereo system which once again I have the speakers uh, that one right there this one over here wired up but I need to get the stereo uh, installed which came with the car um, it's not stock but it came with the car when I first got it it's a Sony x Vlog radio um, also need to get the rear sound bar installed which once again didn't originally come with the Cherokee got it um, out of the out of a junkyard Cherokee with the upgraded audio system and put some, um, what's it called, kicker speakers in it. So I need to get that installed and then along with my subwoofer. And, uh, that would really be about it for the Cherokee. So this thing is slowly coming together day by day. Once we get this floorboard fixed, that's when we can really start doing things. So overall, once again, slowly getting better. So uh, yeah, I guess that's really it for this part three of the Jeep Cherokee rebuild. Uh, part four will probably be uh, when it's complete or at least the carpet's in and stuff. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll go and see you guys then. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see y'all next time. Goodbye.